Okay, I looks like uh, we're at 9.35 and I think everybody's back. Uh, so we will proceed and next up is uh, field operations. And we'd like to welcome Jana. Uh, this is her first, this is a baptism of fire. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. Uh, let me just explain uh, for your benefit a little bit about how we've been operating it. Um, we can start off if you'd like to by the critical items that you have, or you can wait till the end of your discussion and questions for that. It's up to you. Uh, but what we will do is I will ask you uh, by section to um, so that I can open up. I have a, another screen here that I can open up from it has my questions on it by uh, category by account. And then uh, I'll open we'll we'll cover one account and then we'll open the floor to questions from the council. And you can make any comments that you'd like and respond. OK. OK. All right. So, um, as I said, Jana, Jana has this is her first budget, and uh, it's not we're not we're not that hard. Trust me. Uh, uh, well, we can be. Mir can be. Mir can be very hard. All right, Jana, the floor is yours. Please, uh, please begin. Um, I'm guessing that you're opening up with the Poplar Hill Org 19600. Um, this is every year. Uh, Whatever is your pleasure. <laughs> well, that, I, it, it wasn't the way that I was going to go, but that is well, numerical go, order. No, that's numerical no, no, order, go, so it works. It's fine. You go the way you go the way you were go. That's the way you presented. Go okay. ahead. Um, um, with Popper Hill um, Mansion, we don't have many um, changes within operational expenses. There was one CIP item that was approved for Popper Hill, that would be to replace the exterior. Um, siding um, which needs to be replaced due to deterioration and that is a fifty thousand dollar expense okay. next um on the list would Wait, have... first let me let me check okay. in with the sorry council. yes okay go ahead no problem uh questions or comments from that uh, i'm i'm glad we're we're getting to uh fix that siding because it's 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 been an issue um, it just wasn't installed right the first time. So, um, but I'm glad to see that uh, getting taken care of. Yeah, yeah I was well. going to say the that's same. Two hour. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Michelle. Um, uh, just a quick question about the. Um, I know that they're looking at getting a lift rather than a, um, rather than a ramp for accessibility. Where is that funding coming from? I'll have to get back with you on that. Right. Okay, that's fine. I yeah, <laughs> no worries. I'll put that down on the follow-up list. I know they were going to do a ramp at first, and then they 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 didn't think they would get approved for a lift, but they did for, by, through the whatever historical oversight they have. So, which is awesome. That's great. <laughs> I'm glad to see it starting to get more accessible. Okay. Um, no other questions then let's go to the next item. Whatever you whatever you want to go to, um, uh, twenty-two thousand, which is traffic control highway lighting. There will be an increase in operational funds to pay for video detection um, improvements at two intersections. Um, the intersections haven't been determined yet, um, but. Um, up for consideration are East Main at Snow Hill, Pemberton at Parsons, and Isabella at Lake. That will be a $39,908 increase um, in the equipment budget. Any, any uh, questions? 
on that one? Um, no, just uh, generally, uh, I know the mayor and I have talked about some stuff uh, about, you know, looking at um, some intersections that have lights that don't need lights and uh, some stuff like that. Uh, are, are we, have we got, a, are we working on a plan for some of that citywide? Uh, yes, um, we're working with the DID to um, identify those locations. Um, if you've driven down Old Ocean City Highway, um, Maryland 330, 346, you'll notice that Moss Hill um, signal has come down and I believe the one at Civic has come down. I know Moss Hill has, but yeah. those are on our schedule to, um, to come down. Yeah. Okay, yes. awesome. thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Jana, Sorry, are you um, speaking about lighting or the signal lights? Signal, it's traffic signals. Um, okay. I, well, I guess it's it, the, the traffic signals at those intersections are coming down. Um, we are, as far as lighting goes right now, we're working um, um, starting this past week on an LED conversion um, um, for some street lighting. So you're saying the light, the stoplight here at Pemberton and Parsons is coming down? No, no, no. What I'm saying for, okay, for, for this additional $39,000, uh -huh. what we're going to provide are, um, if you look up on the mast arm of the signal, there's a, like, mm -hmm. a little camera. What mm -hmm. that does is it detects um, the vehicles. And when it detects them, it will... Um, change the sequencing of the site, the, the phasing or the sequencing of the signal to say, hey, there's a vehicle there. I need to, to turn green. Okay. And the ones that we have now, either the cameras don't work or the detection is by loops in the ground that may be faulty or some, or they may not have them at all. And at that point, they're just say, oh, every 30 seconds, you know, every minute, the signal will change, you know, to let the um, opposing sides go. Okay, well, did you mention Delaware Avenue and Isabella? Um, Reason why I said that is because I have been stuck at okay. Delaware Avenue and Isabella several times, and that light does not change appropriately. And I've been there like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, wait a minute, do I have to just go through this light? I mean, and we've had several problems with that lightning. I've actually called the city before you came in to report it. Okay. Um, and um, it's been like that for quite a while and nothing's been changed. And then my daughter called me the other day and she was like, mom, I'm stuck here. I'm like, well, just proceed with precaution because that light does that quite often. That's right on that corner, that little um, Isabella West Road. That little pop right right there. Yeah. Um, that vicinity. That one. I got stuck there one time. Yes. Yeah, the one on Priscilla and 13, right in front of Pep Boys, uh, sometimes uh, that one gets, that's a state, and the mayor didn't believe me until he got stuck there one day. Mm. <laughs> and, and you have to wait because you have to, like, make a right turn to go up and do a U-turn on 13. Yeah. And, it's been working fine, but I will ask our um, signal um, team to, or you know, traffic team to to check out the um, the signal at, at um, Delaware and Isabella again to make sure that the um, that it's working appropriately. Um, but yeah, anytime you've got a problem with that, please call because you know there are times when the detection works, but it could be the time of day. There could be a shadow on the on the vehicle detection camera or there could be fog. Um, sometimes the little lenses need to be cleaned. Um, and just sometimes it just, it, it skips something and it's got to reset itself. Um, but all of those are correctable um, if we know about it at the time. Okay, thank you. And I have one question relative to the same, uh, same project. Um, all of the replacements that we're doing are smart cameras, correct? They're not the original camera that just does, when it sees something, it'll put the arrow. Because the, the, the smart camera that I'm talking about is the one that's at five points, where if no car is coming out of one street, it will not change and cycle through that, through that street. You follow it, me? Yes. Um, the, the cameras will, 
yes. be consistent with the newer stuff that we are purchasing um, and how that relates to the programming within the traffic signal controller you know if if that camera is is tied to pick up a left turn if we have multiple cameras you could just have one that picks up that left turn signal and if it right. doesn't pick it up then it that that left turn signal doesn't happen um okay. and it could okay. there could be another one that picks up the main line so yes okay. thank you any other questions all right next next account Next account is resource management, 30,000. Okay. Walk us through that if you have yeah. anything that. Um, Got a few more changes with this. First, I would like to talk about some internal changes that we're going to be making and how that will impact um, uh, some of our salaries. Um, with COVID, we were um, forced us to look at our current practices and determine how we can better react during um, both normal and emergency operations, you know, while serving the city. So, you know, we've had multiple reviews and discussions and we're prepared to move forward with a cross training program between our streets department, our parks department, sanitation, and the signal, um, sorry, the signing and striping texts from traffic. Currently in those positions, we have um, job classifications as motor equipment operators, park maintenance workers, and signing and striping techs. Moving forward, um, those positions will function as field ops techs and they will have a singular career ladder. And this new career ladder will allow team members um, to be eligible for higher salaries through step increases as they become more skilled and diversified. You know, you just won't, when you start um, in field ops, you will basically have rotations through sanitation streets and parks so that you're aware of what each does. Um, ultimately, when you become a senior field ops technician, there will be some um, specialties, you know, so that, you know, if I have a, a super backhoe operator, I'm not going to put him, um, you know, on a sanitation truck on a daily basis. He could, you know, do that job, but his specialty would be more aligned with streets or something like that. Um, so right now, um, those changes, with those changes, we will also have more consistency across the organizational structure of these divisions. Right now, we have crew leaders in some, others, there are pay differences in supervisors. So one of our essential items um, is to correct um, the supervisory pay scale that they will all be at a pay grade eight. They will all, actually, they will all, all of the field ops techs will start at the same grade, but as they move through the, their career ladder or if they become a supervisor, supervisor begins at a pay grade eight. It doesn't seem, um, fair to have some functioning at a lesser salary or lesser pay grade than others when ultimately their job is have the same job requirements or the same responsibilities. So that would be reflected in um, an increase to general fund. Um, also, um, we have an administrative assistant position that is being um, reformatted um, to a new position that will be in the um, Authorized position scheduled is listed as a facility supervisor. Um, this new position will work with our current safety manager, and this gets confusing, who is shown as our logistics manager in the authorized position schedule. But they will work with um, our safety manager to provide um, high level oversight and management to city um, owned and leased properties, like the parks, the marina, Poplar Hill, amphitheater. Um, and they will also assist with asset management. Um, it's critical that we track the lifespan of our facilities and utilities, signing and striping and vehicles, you know, to determine our future needs. And it'll also assist us in staying compliant with um, state and federal law. Okay. These salary changes um, are reflected across a couple of orgs. 
because portions of the positions may be paid out of water and sewer or, or resource management. So um, just to let you know that. Our materials manager position um, is going to be renamed to a logistics coordinator. And this position will continue to be responsible for our inventory, but will also support our, our logistics manager, safety manager, with facility inspections and legit claims. Um, with these increases in job duties and job responsibilities, the position will move from a grade three to a grade five. Diana, can I ask you a favor? Could you, uh, at some point when you get everything settled, um, provide us with an org chart uh, by, by, because it's there's we're familiar right now we're familiar with the people that we see on a on a routine basis uh, and know them in what their job used to be maybe mm -hmm. uh, but if it would help to put a name like Bill or who you know what they, where they are in the in the pecking order okay certainly thank you um, and with our pay scale. Um, there are um, a couple of changes as well. Um, in field ops, we have a few team members who are at a step 30 in their pay grade. Um, by extending the pay scale an additional five steps, these individuals would be eligible for performance pay increases. Um, it comes at a cost of about $1,500 in the general fund and about $1,200 for another individual in the water and sewer fund. Um, so this is reflective of, they would get the salary increase, the step rate, if their performance was satisfactory or above. Those, ap those appear in this year's budget? Yes. Okay. But they may be combined with Because of the because of who the individuals are, they 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 may be combined across several orgs. Yeah, that's one of the things. That when you look at the when you look at the salaries, it it I couldn't make sense of them. But now hearing what you're doing, it makes a little more sense. Um, yeah, I, I I'll agree with you. Um, okay, I, I am fully reliant on on Keith to do the appropriate calculations. <laughs> okay. Um, additional operational expenses um, include um, radios for resource management, um, the 30,000 work. Currently, we have one emergency radio. This will allow us to purchase an additional four. Um, the cost is $11,350. And these radios, um, basically from 9-11, you know, the importance of, of interdepartmental or inter yeah, interdepartmental communication is key. So it allows us to communicate with city police, fire, Maryland State Police, um, EOC, SHA, Wakamaka Roads, and also has a secure channel that cannot be um, um, listened to by the public. Um, for the new um, facility supervisor, there will be a vehicle, um, and this is reflected um, as an additional cost of $35,000. It, will, it is proposed to be a three-quarter ton, four by four, simply because it is deemed the most versatile um, for our carrying and hauling equipment and can be used during emergency operations. That, that addresses one of the personnel committee's things. Wasn't there a, a, a vehicle in there they, they wanted? Does anybody remember that? I think there was. Let me look at it quick. I think it... Um, yeah, Dodge pickup truck. Yeah. Um, we okay. also, we're, we're also replacing additional vehicles um, that may be with parks. Um, there is a, um, a, a, I believe that's a 2000 model um, Dodge pickup um, in parks, if I'm not okay. mistaken. And that, that's also scheduled to be replaced. Um, that is it um, from the, um, the resource management board. Any questions? I do. Um, for the fill up text, how many would you need? Oh, we have um, 
streets is one, two, three. Well, hang on, I can look at the authorized position. Oh, it's not, it, we're not hiring new. I know, but I'm just saying. How, oh, many, how many do we have? Yeah, the lateral move. In streets, we have eight motor equipment operators. In sanitation, we have eight, 10, we have 10. And in parks, we have Parks, we have five, six, seven, and in parking, or sorry, traffic. We would have leave two, but it may be more. Two. So there's eighty more motor operators. Ten. Oh. Is, did you say trash? Um. In, yeah. In sanitation, there are ten. Sanitation. Okay. Um. Seven in parks. Seven in parks, and that includes the horticulturist, which would be a crew leader. Okay, and two in traffic. Two in traffic, and in oh, sorry, I forgot three more. There are three more in street sweeping. Approximately thirty. And there's another. I'm sorry. And there's a there's an issue. You did math better. And there's one more and um one more in streets with the crew leader. Sorry. Keith, a general question for you. Um, is there going to be a, is there going to be a change in the items in the structure? Are we consolidating? Mm -hmm. The accounts at some point, or, or are we going to keep them this way? Uh, <clears throat> the orgs are going to uh, stay the way they are, the individual pieces, but uh, the uh, grouping of them uh, still get grouped as field ops. Yeah. All right, so all we'll do, we'll just see an anomaly in the salaries and the wages this year, right? Um compared to last year? Well, if there's allocations, a few allocation changes, yeah, um, yeah, then it's just that, and one of the way, ways you can, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the detail budget report, you'll see a, uh, a quantity factor that uh, if it has, says 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.4, gotcha. okay, that, I got you. That, that's telling you what the share is. Okay, I got you. Yeah, but there's not much we can do except fill you in well, you know, if the allocation changes, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a one-time uh, difference. Gotcha. Okay. So it will only impact the, the first time. That's true. Change. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. We're good. All right. Uh, next, next, uh, next item. Next account, Jen. Um, 31150, which is streets. There are most of the changes I discussed were with the with the the field ops. There are no um, major changes um, in streets. I I have no questions. Any any questions from the council on that? Uh, there was and I don't. There was one question about a. Uh, about a smaller rear loader garbage truck for small streets. Um, they, they talked about that in the uh, personnel committee. I didn't know if there was any 
consideration or look at how much one of those would cost? I guess their their concern was with with the bigger truck trying to turn down some of these. You know, we have some small streets or tight streets, and uh, I've seen a few close calls. But man, those drivers are good. I tell you. <laughs> so th this would be for a smaller rear loader for like a garbage truck. I think is what they sanitation? were. Sanitation. Yeah, sanitation. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Must be in the wrong department again. <laughs> Need more coffee. <laughs> you know, just on that, um, you know, we put in, uh, I don't know if it's a, I think it's a side loader that's in there this year. Yeah. Um, you know, we put in what we thought was, um, was appropriate for yeah. uh, what, what the budget could handle. Um, and I think, um, you know, there, there always are more needs, but uh, we didn't want to overextend ourselves. Um, but, you know, certainly if there's money falling from the sky, you know. <laughs> Okay. Next item, Jana. Is um, sanitation um, three two zero six one, which is collection and disposal. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see a big question. Uh, the land tipping fees. Yes. Forty six thousand dollar increase. Yes. Um, there are. We are. There are several increases, and part of that is with fees as well. There's going to be an in, a proposed increase in trash um, service fee from fifty nine to sixty three dollars a quarter. Um, this increase will allow the city to recoup increased costs for disposal. In July 2020, tipping fees at Wacomico County um, increased from 60 to $62 a ton. And in September 2020, our yard waste disposal increased from free to $32.50 a ton. Um, with, we're not sure why we've seen this tremendous increase this year. Um, in, um, in our budget, we can, we believe it would be related to COVID um, with more people staying at home, more residential waste is generated um, as opposed to commercial waste. You know, you, you call your um, grub hub and get your food delivered. Um, so you're instead of eating out, but we've also um, not been able to recycle. So we've seen an increase in um, expenditures this year and every year we have had to for the past several years have had to make adjustments to this tipping fee account um so this change of this additional um forty nine thousand dollars um will help offset um the additional fees and additional costs for um for waste collection and disposal also with this um is we are, um, as part of our MS4 compliance, we do street sweeping and we generate a sweeping pile. Um, there, we had your discussion with Amanda, I'm, I don't know if she, um, there was an increase in, I believe in tipping fees for that org as well. Um, and we'll go over it too. Um, to have the, stormwater utility to pay for the cost of their sweeper pile. That is something that we isolate and can say these costs are 100% associated with sweeping and they can't be used as yard waste because they're mixed with styrofoam, straws, you know, and cigarette butt, you know, everything. I, I think, uh, I think there's two things here. Um, one, the last item you're talking about, I understand. And I can understand the, their, their situation. This is another prime example. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm not sure you know it. Have they increased the tipping fees for the rest of the county, for the public? Um, for their, um, their, their, their sticker fee? Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, 
regardless of whether they have or whether they haven't, we're paying county taxes. Correct. And our county taxes, um, we're paying the same county taxes as everybody else in the county. And we're providing the service. And if, if everybody in the, in the city decided to get a sticker and go ahead and drive their waste, we would not have this cost. Yeah. This is a prime example of where there should be an offset uh, from our taxes. Um, and uh, that's something that I think we should bring to the attention of the council. And uh, I, I, for one, will do that. Um, and I think yeah. it's time, yeah. Yeah, I just want to add, we, we just learned about the 50% the uh, rate that we have to pay on, on yard waste uh, when, yes, as me as a homeowner, I could go and drop it off for free. Um, right. We are, uh, we can chat offline about uh, some strategy and in, in how to bring this forward, but I think addressing the council is probably the way to go um, or some certain council members first. Um, but yeah, it is, um, it is very frustrating. It happened in October, apparently. Um, and we're also um, going to be calling around to see if that is the case for other uh, municipalities at Fruitland and, and Del Mar. Um, I, I at least I know Fruitland has their own trash service, I think, if they're um, faced with that as well. Okay, as long as we're going to some, somehow address it. Yeah, and, and Jack, I do want to note that, um, just as a reminder for everybody on council, um, the our, our sanitation and recycling uh, service has um, continually operated at a deficit um, and COVID has just magnified that. Um, and you will see that later, uh, I think when we do have to bring a, a budget amendment forward for additional uh, tipping fee costs, uh, if we're still uh, tracking that way, Jana. Um, so, uh, you know, we never wanna raise fees. Um, it's, it's a dollar a month if you look at it that way. Uh, but we also can't, um, you know, can't keep operating at a loss. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know, the, the other piece of it is, you know, with the yard waste where that, but also the recycling, when, when they stopped accepting recycling, it, I mean, we were, everybody, you know, we were taking it to the recycling center up on the north end of town uh, by Sam's Club. I mean, you know, there, there's, I don't understand why they're, I don't understand how, how, how it's any different if our people pick it up and deliver it, or if we take it to the recycling station, it, I don't, I don't think that was a, a COVID issue because they still have to process it unless they're dumping it in the landfill. I don't know what they're doing with it, but you know, maybe I, maybe yeah. I should shut up. <laughs> no, I, th I think they were for a point just putting it in the landfill. Um, but I do want to note as well that um, chatting with some with Alyssa and uh, Dr. Sarah Sarek, who's an environmental professor at SU yesterday, we were talking about the future of recycling. Um, and, and they are thinking and what they're seeing across the country is that um, plastics may, may not come back. Um, and we're still not recycling plastics because it's a lot to process and, and we don't, uh, the county doesn't have the, the staff to manage that piece of it. Um, but that, that may not come back just because the, 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 the dollars aren't there to, to buy plastic and we were just shipping it to China and that is not a real solution. Um, so I think, again, even as we go back to you know, eating out at restaurants and not using residential trash as much, uh, we still will see big bulk plastic items that we can't recycle um, ending up in our, um, in our trash bins and, and making uh, a larger um, you know, haul to the dump. Well, let's, I, that's my fault for getting off topic here a little bit, but I'm a little, and, and I will not do anything until I sleep tonight and calm down and we can talk. Uh, so there. So Jan, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> so, any, 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 I'm, uh, I'm, Nothing you've said has not crossed my mind as a city resident as well. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions about the uh, 32061 account? Um, the only I'll thing also... I, I do want to, uh, oh. Jack, just um, because it is linked together, we the tipping fee increase that is listed there is actually more than the $41,000. It's actually closer to $100,000. 
It's just because we separated out the street sweeping, that's now resides in, in 6820, um, because you'll see a $53,000 increase there. So we just move that from there to there. So the actual net increase is closer to $100,000 in tipping fees, not 43. So I, I just want to make sure that we, we understand the true impact of the increase is not 40, but 100. Right. Thank you for making me feel twice as angry. <laughs> I'd also like to um, point out <clears throat> that um, there is also the purchase of a new side load um, trash truck. Um, yeah, I, we, I see that. Yeah. That's the 280, right? Correct. Um, and maybe Keith can point out what there's like a, a the lease payment is actually for the trash truck, but they're they're kind of shown on two lines. So yeah. um, question. Yeah, Jack, Jack stuff. I think he's heard that one before. I have a question. Okay, so the side loading trash truck is different than the small trash truck. It's not the same thing. Yes, there are many options in trash trucks. Uh, this is the arm that comes out the side and picks up your, your thing and, and dumps mm -hmm. it. Uh, what the crews were asking for, uh, or what the personnel committee was asking for was a smaller uh, rear load truck where it compacts the trash in the back, where personnel have to stand on the back of the truck, manually load those cans into the truck. Um, we take those on, on smaller side streets. We do have some of those already. Um, we do? Yes. Okay. Thank Please. you. Yeah. Okay, Jana, next one. Um, is 32062, which is sanitation recycling. Um, no major um, changes in that org. I don't have any questions. Does anybody on the council have questions? Angela, your hand raised. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean no it. No problem. I didn't mean to raise. I I was <laughs> no scratching problem. my head over a few things somewhere. Sorry, sorry. All right, next, Jana. Um, is the org three four zero six four, which is fleet management. Yeah. Um, there are are no major changes. Um, I will note that you will see an increase in um, uniform cleaning and maintenance across all um all of our orgs. Um, our current contract, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to, to make it a little more cost efficient than it is, but um, it, the prices have gone up for um, to supply um, uniforms and to clean them okay. with that service. It's, it's not a huge increase, you know, it's not a huge um, monetary um, hit to the budget, but um, when you look at every dollar and you realize that, you know, we're, we're still, we're working to, to try to, um, to reduce the impact. We know if that's a multi-year uh, item for bid. Yes. Okay. I think it, you know, I, I believe it's a three-year one. Um, Universe is our contractor. I've got a copy of the contract, and it may be that you've got a, a yearly um, renewal kind of thing with them. But uh, gotcha. Okay. Any questions on that account from anybody? Okay. Okay. Next item is um, thirty-five thousand. The carpentry shop, carpenter shop. That's pretty clean. No major changes. Any questions from the council? All right, none. Next is forty thousand zoo. Okay. Um, with the zoo. We um, have additional personnel um, shown in the budget. Um, currently, we have a seasonal groundskeeper. Um, this person would um, transition um, to a part-time groundskeeper. Um, essentially, this uh, by having a, a full-time part-time person, um, it'll allow the zoo to be better equi equipped to um, meet their monthly maintenance goals and um, would allow I'll keep or always stay focused on animals rather than the um, facilities. Um, 
for essential items at the zoo that are also reflected um, in budgetary increases. Um, there's an increase proposed of $43,800 to the um, veterinarian account. Um, this increase in funding would cover the cost of um, lab fees for um, the zoo collection, um, about $15,000, and it would also cover other preventative care, such as vaccines and emergency care. The request for additional funding um, is in response to comments provided during an AZA reaccreditation um, process. We have requested with that. a vehicle. Um, the existing van um, is at the end of its useful life. Um, the new vehicle, um, which is properly proposed to be like a Ford, Ford Transit, um, would have rear climate control. And this would allow the zoo to transport large animals, um, either as part of an animal exchange between zoos or take them to places for emergency care. They also use it for um, for food and other, you know, transportation, things like that. Um, that comes at a cost of 40,000. Um, and there's also a $7,000 increase in the building budget or building account. Um, these additional funds would be used to upgrade electrical in several buildings, several exhibit buildings. Currently, you know, during winter, um, they're running electrical cords, provide supplemental heat during winter months. There are just not enough outlets um, in the facilities, so this upgrade um, would help. And it is an integral part of their AZA accreditation as well. Right, and if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Keith, um, what we worked out, Andy, you were, you were involved with it as well. Um, there are some donations that come from the Zoo Commission. Are those in the general fund um, category? revenue for donations? Um, so the migration of the zoo commission money, um, we can, you're not seeing that right here in the zoo. Um, we have that as a placeholder, but it's a break even. So it's the whole program. It's what we've talked about migrating all right. of that over. So that was where the donations would be included. So you're not seeing all of that detail here. Um, but we can talk about that separately because it is break even. Um, it's not listed in the, all these accounts just yet. Yeah, I think one of the things we should do, Andy, I was thinking about this when I when I got to this section. We should have at one of the work sessions a little discussion to bring the rest of the council up to speed. I only know about the thing because I'm sitting on the commission, but uh, I think we should have maybe a 10 or 15 minutes what the the way it used to be run and now the way it is being run. Sure. Can we do that? Uh huh. And um, would you like that before, like kind of immediate? So it's as we look at budget, we can do it yeah, sooner rather than Yeah, it's, it's only like 10 or 15 minutes. So, right. Kim, if you could work with Kim and then um, that would be great. Sure. Any, any questions from the, uh, from the council on this? Okay. Next is 45,000, which is parks. Okay. In um, parks, there are um, three new items We're, um, as far as our essential items list. One is a Kubota tractor. Um, this is a tractor bush hog combination that will replace our current tractor. The current tractor, tractor was purchased in 1980. Um, we use this equipment to cut brush on city-owned properties and along city rights of way. Um, it comes at a cost of $30,000. There is also, um, uh, there was also an approved request for a new vehicle. This um, will provide a four-wheel drive truck with the snow plow um, and will replace a 2000 model with 100,005 miles at a cost of $38,500. Um, also um, is an additional $8,000 for wildlife management. The wildlife management account is used to pay for mosquito control and termite control at the bandstand. The additional funds will allow us to continue to fund those efforts as well as provide goose repellent and wildlife damage management. As part of the CIP, there was also an additional purchase 
of a multi-purchase mower with attachments. During the summer, this equipment can be used as a mower. Um, in the winter, it can be used for snow removal with the plow, salt spreader, and a power broom attachment. It comes in at $63,000. Questions from the council? You're on mute. Yeah, for the uh, just because I because I have no idea about uh, equipment and as as it's used. So the sixty three thousand dollar proposal for equipment that could be for s snow removal, a blower, a, I don't know, maybe a toothbrush in between. Um, what is there any? Is there any other? departments that have any of this equipment that you can cross share it or? Um, that, that actually is one piece of equipment. Um, and it is listed in our, um, in the CIP um, items as um, okay. field ops equipment 18-11. And the idea is that, and this is part of our um, transition to um, the field ops tech. Um, while the, the piece of equipment may be assigned to parks, um, it will be used as needed. It could, if, it, um, if I need to use it um, to get into a tight Anywhere. spot to do snow removal, streets may run it that day um, or sanitation could run it. Um, it, it um, it just provides us another tool for um, for meeting the needs both during the summer and during the winter. And Angela, to um, go a little further, we have um, not tried to think of our departments in silos. So if, if Waterworks needs something and Field Ops has it, they're more than willing to share and uh, vice versa. Um, you know, unless there is, you know, continual need for multiple of the same equipment, then, then we, we get, we try to get uh, each of them their own. But if we're using them sporadically, uh, there's no sense in, in buying multiples and to share. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, 31154, which is the parking authority. In parking, as one of our essential requests, um, is a um, funding for increased um, overtime um, with more events occurring downtown. Um, there is a need to work outside of the normal working hours. Um, this overtime request will be for that event support and it will also provide funding for snow removal. It comes in at a cost of 2816 Any uh, questions from the council? Um, oh, sorry. Also with parking, um, you will notice in the fee schedule that um, all parking, all monthly lot fees are going to be increased by $5 a month. The garage will be increased to $10 a month and parking meters will increase from $1 to $2 per hour. We will continue to offer um, our, the $1 hourly rate at the parking garage and two hours free parking um, in lot one. I have a question. When does this take effect? Does this take effect January 1st or is it July 1st? It is part of that. Um, it's um, at the at the parking um or in in the parking fund. Um, you will notice that um, there are um, I can't find my paper. Um, an increase in um, fees 
um, bank fees. Part of this will help offset um, those um, those costs as well, especially with the parking meters. Um, Keith, you can you help us with that when the thing is scheduled to start? I thought the parking permits historically weren't they January first? Because I think we didn't one time we had an issue with the county didn't budget for it or something because they didn't know. So have they been notified that we may be increasing the parking permits and when it would take effect? They have not been. Um, we can. <laughs> kind of like our tipping fees, right? <laughs> so I guess yeah, you said it, you know? <laughs> right. yeah. I guess they should be. I guess they should be notified. I guess when it's totally approved, we, we probably don't want to put the the cart. The whole, we got to approve would, everything, right? Correct. We got to approve the the, the upgrades in the or the up, uh, increased fees in this current budget. So maybe we need to wait until it's approved before. But they're also doing their budget. And, and so, you know, I'm thinking as a county taxpayer, if I do pay a full share, um, you know, that uh, it would, you know, be nice to let them know, hey, this fee's being considered, you might want to include it in your budget. But that's just- uh, As much as they, I hate- you know, they, don't, they don't do that to us. For some stuff we, we should still yeah i i would let them know i yeah I, yeah i think we're gonna let everybody know um I'm there's some other nonprofits and there's some other people who are doing it i think if we get through today um no it may not be final if it's still in for consideration we can notify current permit holders that this is what is the intended um plan that's how i would word it andy okay Okay, that all sounds good. You all let them know. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do like Jack. I'm going to sleep on it, and I'll wake up tomorrow and, and, and let them know. <laughs> yeah, I have an idea about that no, tax rate. We may want to change it for, for the county. <laughs> yeah, and, and just one thing with the parking, as we keep going over, Keith brought it up in the overall financials. Um, we're, we're operating our parking fund off of a significant deficit, and it, something's got to give. Either we subsidize it continually with the general fund or it's pay to play. Um, so that's where we're in, this, in, in the parking rate increase. It's actually part of a three year phase in of where we think we should be. So by year three, we will be um, above, we'll be in the black again. Right now um, we're in the red and I think it's gonna take a few years, a couple of years to get out of it, but we can go into that if necessary, yeah. but. Yeah. Okay. okay, Jan, any next? Um, we're moving to the water branch. It is 82076. Okay. Um, within water, um, sorry, that's going to be in sewer. Um, there are, are no major um, increases. Um, I will say that there is a, um, a CIP approved item to replace um, distribution and piping valves. This um, it tends to be an, this is an annual um, event where we, have, we, were, we locate our um, small two inch, two inches or smaller galvanized water mains through this and replace um, inoperable valves. Um, that's $100,000. The question that I had on this one was um, a strange one, but I think I know what it is based on our initial discussion. Is the decrease in health insurance just because of uh, switching departments or an offset somewhere. So that is that. It's the only yeah, it can, health insurance that went down. It can be people. If, if somebody 
if we have a transition of, of folks um, and what their actual insurance coverage is. So you may have somebody that was married who's left the department and you now bring in somebody that's single oh, okay. halfway through. Gotcha. Okay. That explains it. Any uh, questions from the other council people? Okay. Yeah, next. Um, is 86085, which is the sewer branch of utilities. Um, okay. There is a, um, a purchase of a um, transit cargo van. It will actually be used by the utilities meter technicians. Um, there's a water meet, they perform water meter repair, installation, emergency calls. This vehicle will replace a Chevy Colorado that was lost as a result of an accident at the cost of $45,000. Um, additionally, um, the, there's a CIP approved item um, that will um, fund the rehabilitation of manholes and sewer mains as part of a sewer infiltration and inflow remediation, um, $500,000 that's um, we work with the DID um, to, to fit that out and to get that work done, um, but it benefits um, our utilities branch. Um, also within um, the CIP, there was um, a purchase of a mini excavator with trailer. This equipment will replace an aging backhoe. The mini excavator is just size for better transport and um, working in tight locations. Um, it comes at a cost of $60,000. There's also the purchase of a pipeline inspection camera. The existing camera is unreliable. Um, we've had to do multiple repairs. It's down frequently. With the purchase of new camera, it'll allow the utilities team to reduce the backlog um, of sewer mains and sewer laterals that are waiting to be inspected. This inspection process is critical to identifying issues um, with these um, mains before a sewer overflow can occur. This camera um, comes at a cost of sixty-five thousand dollars. Dan, I have I have a question about that. Okay. Um, what's the, what's the normal lifespan of those cameras? I will have to get back with you on that. I um, okay because we we bought one of those. Um, I'm going to say five years ago. And I'm not sure if that's the existing one um, that has become unreliable. Okay, can you just check and let me know? I will. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. That mini excavator, that was, uh, wasn't that on a personnel thing a couple of years ago or last year? I know it was something that's been uh, talked about for a couple of years. Yeah, it was on the personnel committee the last two years, I think, before this. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Jana. Okay. Um, we have the marina um, is 47,000. No changes um, for me. Questions from the council on that? Okay. Um, the next one is the stormwater um, 60820. There you will see um, 
an additional increase in tipping fees to pay for the um, street sweeping um, costs. And you will also see um, a purchase of a street sweeper. Um, the stormwater, stormwater utility will purchase a street sweeper for us. The new model will replace the current sweeper that's been plagued with multiple costs of repairs. Um, as I said before, street sweeping is critical um, to meet the requirements of our MS4 permit. The total cost of that is 250000 but it will be leased. Or not, I'm not sure. Questions from the council? Maybe, uh, maybe purchase, yeah. We have a question. I just want to know what the increase of tipping fees is for. I, I got the purchase of the street sweeper, but what was the other? Um, within street sweeping, um, the waste that is collected on the roads is actually deposited in the landfill. So rather than that being paid as a residential waste, mm -hmm. we, um, we have isolated it to be a cost of the stormwater utility because street sweeping is a function um, to, to improve our stormwater, you know, as of our stormwater utility. Mm -hmm. So now the, um, the street sweeping utility will pay for the disposal of the waste that is collected on the sides of the road um, through our street sweeping program. Thank you. Here. It is, uh, so you, I see you got vehicle purchase for 375,000 and new lease payments for 79,559. So is it, is it one or the other? Or have you got both of them in there on that line? I can jump in there. Um, uh, for any capital outlay where we're leasing it, we have to show the appropriation for the full purchase of it so that we can credit our lease proceeds and debit the capital outlay. But we also have to pay, expand the, um, <clears throat> expand the uh, lease payment. So uh, we, need, we need all of those items accounted for in the budget. So if we just purchased it, would we have to have that new lease payment on there? No, if we, but then it would come from our general revenues as opposed to uh, a, a revenue line item lease proceeds. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. Other questions? Jana? I'm at the end of my, my group. Oh. Okay. Jana, thank you. Um, I, I will tell you, um, usually during a transition of personnel, we um, there are issues that, that, that go with that. And I will tell you that uh, it's been pretty seamless with you joining the organization. So that's, um, that's a tribute to both you and, and your staff. Thank you. Um, and um, you know, we hear you hear always hear good and bad things, and I haven't heard any bad things. So, I, I know that uh, I know I know that. Matter of fact, I've had some very positive things uh, that I've heard, and and that's very very good. So, thank you for your work on the budget, and thank you for the work you do uh, every day. We thank really you. appreciate it. Any other comments from the council? I do. I think Jan has done a marvelous job just coming in. Um, especially with this budget. <laughs> because when I first came on, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I have never seen so many figures in my life and how you, you know, manipulate these figures to be just right. So I appreciate you, appreciate your work um, and your time. And you can tell your employees that um, our employees, the city workers feel like that we appreciate what they're doing as well, especially during this COVID time that have put their lives at great risk. You all have. So we appreciate the city of Salisbury appreciates everything that you've done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, next up we have, let me get my other list. H.C. CD. Ron, how are you? 
Chair Christine. Great. Anne. How are you? Welcome. Rachel. All right. We In fact, we've invited um, all of Ron's uh, senior leaders to this is his first time. They wanted to kind of take a, a peek at how this process goes because we have some new people. Um, and they may jump in on, on certain items if it's specific to their uh, their division. That's fine. Go ahead, Ron. Ron. Ron, before you start, let me um, tell you what, how we've been running and it seems to be working, so we're not gonna change it. Um, first, uh, when you begin, you can do your critical items if you'd like to do it then, or if you cho choose to do it at the end of the presentation, that's fine. Um, but uh, then we will go over and if you would announce which account you're going to be discussing in the order, because all of us have notes that are um, by account number. So uh, our questions are, are pre-done. So welcome okay. to you and your crew and uh, let's get started. Okay, so we are gonna go over CIP items or shall I say item um, off the bat, obviously um, as I get my feet wet, uh, we'll be probably looking to expand that uh, as we determine the needs for future use within HTDD. Uh, the only CIP item that is on the budget this year is for an additional, or actually it's additional slash replacement of uh, one of our current Jeep Liberties uh, that is tending to cost us a pretty decent amount of money and loss of time of the vehicle. Um, so that is the only item in our CIP for this current year. Um, would be the replacement uh, or additional vehicle for housing uh, and community development, which will use, be used specifically by the homelessness and housing division of the department. Um, like I said, I would expect in the future, uh, we'll see uh, an increase in requests, uh, but that's what we have for this year. Uh, we, can, uh, we can, and as we talk more, as Christine gets into her piece um, with her division, uh, we'll touch a little bit more on why it's important that we have that available for this year. Um, so we'll break it down, um, budget line item. Um, the first one would be 501-001, uh, which is salaries clerical. Um, we are going to, we have um, requested an additional staff member for the community relations team. As many of you are aware, uh, prior to my arrival was the neighborhood relations team. Uh, we did make that change uh, in title so we could encompass all of the community in our efforts uh, within that department. So seeing that we're opening an additional, or we will be opening an additional community center in the very near future, uh, coverage for those facilities and programs taking place, uh, we have requested an additional part-time um, staff to help with that, um, that piece, to help with coverage of programs. Um, in addition, <coughs> Uh, salaries, non-clerical, um, that's actually, that's where that increase will come from. I apologize. I was looking at the wrong one. Um, we'll walk down through through salaries, kind of the next increase piece, uh, obviously with health insurance, um, we can break down into, you know, the meat of the budget outside of, uh, personnel, uh, those retirement costs, workers' comp insurance, all that is is already dictated uh, with the amount of employees we have. Uh, we'll hey, Ron, start with... can, I, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Um, if you would just go over the items that you want to highlight. Okay. Because, yeah, we don't, we've gone over the whole budget. So, okay, ourselves. great. So that would so make what, was that, easy, what was that account number you. again? What was that the account? account yeah, the account number. It's 25200. That's our account. And then uh, in salaries is 0010025015. 501001002. Uh, the, the major, the major are increases or um, additions to the budget uh, this year uh, would be the vehicle from us, which we talked about, the increase in personnel services, which be an additional part-time individual. Um, uh, also, we, I know last year there was a request from the department for an increase in travel, uh, not travel and training, but travel and training. They go hand in hand with one another, um, and. What I was able to do is take a look at our budget and kind of balance out where we're spending money. And, and what I would like to eliminate is, re, is any type of, um, I know we're going to have budget uh, requests, uh, amendment requests through the city from time to time, but I've done quite a bit of them. So my goal was to try and balance the budget out so we didn't have to do that. So I was able to find funding within our current budget 
uh, that looks like hasn't been used or won't be used um, for that specific item and transfer money from one account to the other. So with travel and training, uh, we did see a pretty decent increase. And in support of um, you know, our career ladder and our hope that we can retain employees um, and have better trained employees, I, we increased those, uh, the travel and training, which is 25200. 555, 503, and 504 um, by approximately $3,000 um, for the travel piece. And I believe it was a $2,500 increase for training in schools. I am a very strong believer in, in uh, continuing education. Um, I think it makes better employees and it, it, our knowledge base goes up. So that I think that's important as we continue to grow within the department. Uh, and you know, provide future leaders for the city of Salisbury. Ultimately, I think that should be our goal uh, in management is to, to have our people grow and move into leadership roles. Any questions on that? Any questions right. from the council on 25200? There were some um, additional increases uh, in a couple of line items we see uh, set percentage increases for the for our, our rent, um, for our, our, our software services. And I, I wanted to be sure that we included those in the budget. So you would have seen some money move, uh, some increases. Uh, I'll give you a specific in rent. Uh, we saw an increase for HCDD office space of uh, $2,300. Um, there was uh, the, the increase last year uh, was not included. So you'll see a bit more of an increase in that line item, which is 546012. And then lastly, um, the the last piece would be the one, 150,000 in human and life services position um, as part of a possible yeah. expansion of housing and community development to better serve our community. Andy can speak yeah. a little bit more about that program. Yes, so increase under operating. Correct. Yeah, yep. the, the three thousand percent increase. Yeah, um, thirty-eight hundred to be exact. Yeah, <laughs> thirty-eight hundred. Yeah, um, we we put it in this account. It's going to be split up. Um, it's going to primarily be um, similar to the way Christine's division is set up, where we have a manager and then a coordinator caseworker who will be helping. So it'll be two positions and then additional supplies and materials. So we, we earmarked $150,000. Now, uh, where that came from is, is really in response to what we've seen in COVID um, and where there's disparities that have come, uh, come along specifically with our, um, our vulnerable population departments. Um, and, and how we're able to respond to crisis in real time, understanding that a lot of that stuff needs to be done on a local level. Um, we've seen, we talked about it on Monday with the fire department, how we respond with our SWIFT team. So think about it as, as, as this team that can go um, through this human services piece and respond to whether it's mental health issues or, or working with our vulnerable populations in crisis, but this response team that's going to be able to really dive um, into some of the um, some of the material on a local level. Um, and then um, I have a couple of notes here. Um, and, and, and really, um, and we're going to be use, um, using the, um, some of the, the dollars that we have been allocated um, to, to help pay for this um, program. So this is one of the things that um, the mayor would like us to stand up moving forward to really um, respond to um, what we've seen uh, through COVID. And uh, if anybody else, Julia, if you had anything else you wanted to add to that or any questions, um, this is still being developed. Um, it's in its infancy right now. We wanted to get it on the council's agenda um, and, and the money budgeted, um, but uh, we haven't actually formalized the job descriptions yet. Yeah, I think, uh, Jack, if I could just add, um, you know, knowing that uh, there's there's funding for um, you know issues that have arisen out of COVID that we've we've gotten from the federal government, this is an opportunity to do something that we've we've talked about for a long time to focus on this area of our of our population, knowing that 
social services and the health department don't have the bandwidth to, to support um, our folks. They're incredibly overwhelmed um, and not, not standing up the same thing here, but um, trying to address needs um, early um, in, in, a, in, a, in a better, more targeted way. Uh, I think that you know, moving into the future, it's, it's items that can be pulled off of the, the police department's plate um, you know, we're talking, we're talking down the road here, uh, but just trying to get the foundation in place uh, and taking advantage of these dollars to um, really uh, support those that have, have fallen through the cracks and continue to fall through the cracks that all have been um, just um, exponentially thrown in our face through COVID. Um, so again, it is high level, um, acknowledge that. Um, Angela, I see your hand. But I just, this, so this is directly for the, um, our homeless program, housing first program, like a manager and then a full-time worker? Is it, it, it would be uh, structured similar to how our housing and homeless division is set up. So you have a manager and then a oh. team worker. That's, that's a structure. It wouldn't fall underneath homeless and housing. It's not being added to Christine's team. It would be another division within housing and community development. Um, there may be some overlap, but not, um, we realize our vulnerable populations and, and the disparity extends beyond the homeless population. So um, we didn't see this as just falling within that, that targeted. So yeah, what type think. of, okay. I'm sorry. What, so what type of task are they doing? I think they're addressing um, mental health needs that are in our community. Uh, I think they could address, you know, some of the work that 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 I'm doing, that Rachel's doing, uh, that others in the community are doing for for the vulnerable populations task force, formalizing that in, in a different way. Uh, I think in the future, um, there's the opportunity to, uh, and we're, we're uh, this is news to Christine and, and Ron, but looking at this this human services as a as a future future department. Uh, that, that is going to fall on city needs, um, uh, city responsibilities on our shoulders that could in, entail uh, Christine's work with the homeless, this new division, SWIFT. We've already sort of built that in the, in the hot team uh, that goes out uh, with case managers to address uh, everybody's needs in a holistic way because we, we don't have all of the answers right now. Uh, we don't have all the support on the city. Um, so you know, a, a little bit of it will be uh, exploration and figuring out exactly what it looks like. Um, but knowing that we have to, this is an area that we're, we're, we're not addressing in a way that uh, our, our citizens, our residents deserve. I, I think I would, what, if I could, if I could, just let me make a suggestion, because this is going to, this, this topic alone could take us an hour and a half. It, I think that since we have time, and we do it. The, we do it the way, this way. I would like to see a presentation at some uh, work session, uh, and for lack of a better term, a business plan. And and I'm not talking about return on investment stuff. I'm talking about this is this is our vision. This is the structure, uh, the approximate structure. Uh, these are the goals. These are the objectives. And this is what our, you know, the first year, this is what we're gonna do. Just a general idea, because for me to sit and, and, and approve $151,000 for a new department, or let's call it department, a new section of a department, mm -hmm. um, I think we need to have a little more meat. Need a blue so part. if I could ask you to, let's, mm -hmm. let's put this discussion on a work session where we can focus on it, because we have a lot of other budget items to go over. Uh, and then uh, then we can ask all the questions we want because right now my mind's spinning. I got 10 questions, but mm -hmm. if, we, if I ask them all, we're gonna be here all day. Mm -mm. Is that all right? Sure, we can do that. Yeah, and I, I agree I agree with Jack. I, I, I think in, in principle and perspective, uh, I'm supportive of a human services department, but I think Let's do it, let's do it right. Because if we piecemeal stuff in this department, that department, that department, then it's, you know, let's let's start with the green field with it 
and and say, hey, we got these services that we do in these various departments and putting it under one umbrella, I, I think would, because th this is this is a valuable service that municipalities are, are gonna have to step up in the, in the future. I mean, we're, and we're seeing a lot of this, the disparities of, of, you know, things that we expect police officers to be, they're not, they're, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not psychologists, they're not psychiatrists, they're not social workers. And, and I think we've lumped all that on, on law enforcement, which causes a lot of the issues that we see around the country um, that disproportionately affect people uh, in our communities that don't have the resources. And I think this is a, a deep discussion that, that we need to have at a work session to put a plan together to address this. And, and it's something that I think would you know, it's, it saves a lot all the way around. And we see the impact that Swift has had. We've seen the impact that Christina and her team has had. So I, I, I think this is a right direction, but let's, let's just do it. This is good. right. The whole, I, you know. I have a comment. I have a comment too, adding to this, which will go maybe more into the presentation. I also wonder like, for mobile crisis, for instance, if we would partner with them, in, especially in regards to a budget, if we're looking at mental health needs and we already have mobile crisis going out with the Salisbury Police Department, if, there would, if they would be willing to, um, and I think they would be open to it, knowing them as an agency like I do, to even fund half of that position to start building that infrastructure. Um, it could be sharing the load as far as financially also. It could be another, option out there for that. And Jack, if I could just add one thing to that piece is, I think an important uh, area that uh, we lack the ability right now in housing and community development is this connection piece with, you know, funding and partnerships, like our, the majority of our partnerships for, for, for funding are through external partners. So at times we get calls, we refer where you know, I believe this position could help in that area as well uh, to be better connected with those individuals, better connected with uh, the state government. And that's kind of a push that I'm putting on for the next year as well so that we have uh, additional funding opportunities for these types of things. Now we recognize it even more so than before uh, with um, people struggling with mortgages and, and rent and all of that and how we can better connect them. So um, that's just a piece I wanted to add to it. Yeah, and that should be part of the discussion. Thanks, right. okay. we'll, we'll put something together. Good. Um, just a few other things I wanted to touch on before we move into Christine's portion. Um, if you look across our programming dollars that we're going to utilize in the city, and I'm pulling up those uh, numbers for you, it's basically our events budget, which is uh, 555513 not uh, 500, 501. So I, knowing that we were planning to have our Newton Street Community Center open relatively shortly, I wanted to balance our, our monies between the two uh, where we had a much higher uh, amount last year in one, which would have been Truett Street and Newton Street was a little bit more behind because we weren't sure when it was gonna open. But we wanna provide the same level of programming at both facilities. So that's why you see that balanced approach there. And lastly, I know I don't have a whole lot of changes here. It's more moving things around that better benefit our department. Um, I did add $1,500 to the Santa's workshop program. What that will do is it will actually prevent the budget amendment that needs to go through council um, because we receive funding from, it'll basically refund itself. If the money's in the budget, it, it wouldn't need to be brought um, to council. Uh, we could spend that money. It would be reimbursed through that um, donation that we receive from the community to support the Santa's Workshop program. Um, so, you know, we will move in. If you don't have any other questions about the meat of this. Um, um, let, let me see if we do have, because I have one. Um, my question is, um, there's been a reduction in the homeless to work program. Can you address that? Yeah, so... And Christine could speak further on it, you know, through this, the COVID time right now, I think that when the program was to be brought up, we, we are not able to get it off the ground because we're not able to find an agency that, that is willing to support it during our current 
pandemic. And we don't know when those restrictions are going to be lifted. I, my, everybody hopes soon. Um, you know, we did do some uh, budget transfers with that money, knowing that we would not be able to support that program this year. Um, and Christine and I spoke in depth about it. And uh, she, she and I both believe that, you know, if we put the money in there that, you know, it's possible we wouldn't be able to support the program due to COVID. It's not something we can't look at in the future, um, but until we get through this and, and agencies feel comfortable working through this, and we're gonna to continue to look at how we approach that panhandling the work program. And is that the best method we can use or are there other ways that uh, we can, you know, get these individuals connected? Uh, and I know Christine deals with it on a daily basis, we talk about it. Um, and I know she's got a lot of really good ideas and, and you know, we hope that after it's over, we can have some program that can support it. And, uh, you know, we could have to look at funding that again in, in the future at a higher. We did leave some money in there in case we were able to get something started later in the year. Anybody else have any questions on that? Uh, I, I would just suggest with the donation piece, um, are, are you putting in a potential like receive donations as far as like your income? Yes. Okay. That's that's what saves the, the budget yes. amendments. Yeah, that's, that's why, yeah, that's what we did that for, yep. Okay, thank you. Anybody else is going to the next, uh, next account? Okay, so um, the, the next piece is going to be in relation to the housing and homeless team, homelessness team. Um, you know, one of the objectives for that department was to seek out additional funding to help support um, the department. Christine was able to um, receive, well, she will be receiving grant funding in June. Christine, you correct me if I'm wrong that will support an additional uh, homelessness case manager, uh, or excuse me, homelessness case specialist uh, or coordinator within the department. So we will be adding one additional grant funded position to housing and homelessness. Um, and I, that is reflected in the number of people that we served. We saw a 68% increase in the number of actual visits between Joe and Christine. And that did not include the uh, Camp Hope time. So we are seeing a drastic increase in need for services in this area. And um, you know that's why we explored this. And Christine, you can speak a little bit further about it, where the funding came from. Uh, but you know we are excited in that additional vehicle that we'll have for the division. Uh, we'll then, we'll be able to provide a vehicle for all of them in hopes that the Liberty will continue to move along for a period of time. Christine? So in relation to the vehicle that Ron's asking for, we have, we both, we, Joe and I both have Jeep Liberties that have been around, I don't know what year they are, they're kind of old. Um, they spend a lot of time in the shop right now with different issues. Um, so we had asked for one um, vehicle um, to, because Joe, part of Joe's job is taking people to um, doctor's visits and mental health appointments and all the things. And so um, he, he has people in that car every single day and the vehicle, especially his is just deteriorated to a point that it's, it's, it's not great. Um, and if we hire a new person and one of the Jeeps does go down, they could use the one that I use. Cause usually what I'm using it for is I'm picking up things for people or I, I occasionally take people to appointments or whatever, but I go to visit people in the woods. I, I could be okay without a vehicle if, if one of those Jeeps would go down, but we're, they're spending a lot of time in the shop. <laughs> my my engine light just came on yesterday, so I've got to get it over there and get that looked at. Um, so the the funding to hire this the, the next person um, is coming through um, the Department of Housing and Community Development. They are throwing money our way, um, which is great. Um, they don't usually allow you to hire people with that money. It usually has to be used for housing. Um, they have um, approved to give us 50, um, 54,000, which would fund a case manager with benefits um, to help Joe. Um, Joe is extremely overwhelmed right now with the people that we're seeing. Um, they're also gonna give us um, $10,000 additional rapid rehousing funding, which is um, meant to be short-term support for to get people quickly out of homelessness. And then uh, $3,500 for hand washing stations and portable toilets, um, because now that the cold weather shelter is closed, um, those street homeless don't have access to um, you know, bathrooms, because most places are still not allowing you to use public restrooms. So that will be coming um, 
should be June. Um, we're waiting to hear back, of course, as you know, we are waiting for um, state and federal government to get back to you. <laughs> They're just really slow, but they've already approved that they will send us that money. Um, there's some additional money coming beyond that. Um, I'm going to um, request more grant money today. Um, it's to be used for emergency shelter, cold weather shelter, and for hotel stays for those who, um, if someone is homeless and gets COVID, for them to quarantine because the shelters won't take them if they have COVID. So that money's coming um, to the whole COC. I'm not sure how much of that money we're going to get yet. Um, that's another $700,000 as a, the setting to the Tri-County area. So we're working on that. And then beyond that, there's more money coming. <laughs> uh, I'm looking to um, hopefully purchase some uh, um, temporary shelters, um, non-congregate sheltering with that money that's coming down the road um, because congregate shelters in a time of COVID are not really the great way to go. And um, the... Um, the accessibility to shelter has become very, very limited. Shelters are still operating at half capacity. So there's still not beds for a lot of people. So that's that's all grant funded though, that none of that is city money. Um, for my budget, specifically from the city, I'm asking for the same thing that I've been asking for since I got here, uh, or since we took had this program of the 97,300, that will fund all of the people that I currently have in housing and will allow us to fund um, one more person um, into the permanent supportive housing program. And then all again, the rapid rehousing money that we're getting from the state will help us get other people into housing on a short term, you know, as a short term assistance basis. But otherwise, my budget is the same as it has been. Questions? Christine, did we add an additional line item in the in the housing homeless budget for um, I think it was around two thousand dollars for those like common needs like things that we oh, don't have available yes i did ask i forgot that part thank you for reminding me i did ask for um for some a dollar from flexible spending so what we've seen and, and julia can attest to this because it <laughs> she offered to help um there's there's times when um especially during covid where people need things that we just don't have access to so often joe and i are paying out of pocket for these things and we're not getting reimbursed we're not even submitting for a reimbursement it's not like the city's not reimbursing us we just it's a quick like this person needs a pack of diapers right now and we just go buy it or they need lunch and you know and so we do partner with people to try to get those things available but sometimes we, we don't have access um to whatever the thing is that they need and it's kind of like an immediate need or to pay for co-pays for prescriptions, two and three dollars, but they don't have it because they're homeless. So I did ask for um, two thousand dollars to be um, included for more flexible spending that we could either purchase and get reimbursed for or whatever, just allow that money in our budget. Um, it's just we have seen an ongoing one. One night we had a, a police department called me, the police department called me, they had a man in their lobby um, who had COVID and he was homeless and nobody would take him. And so we were gonna put him in a hotel um, for the night until we could figure out, until we could access funding from the agencies that have the funding um, because he was, so he literally spent the night in the hotel lobby or the police department lobby because we didn't have the money to, you know, we, we didn't have quick access to money to get him into some place. So it's those kinds of things that we've been seeing, especially over COVID, the need is great. And we, Joe and I will often, like I said, uh, Ron even put somebody in a hotel. Um, we, had, we had somebody that um, needed, a place to stay immediately and um she couldn't go to shelter so ron ron put her in a hotel um so it's just for that kind of thing um an immediate need of something that um someone that's experiencing homelessness has not just an everyday like we're gonna feed them every day type of thing because i usually have access to food um but other things that they might need so we did ask for that um the bus tickets for a thousand dollars we've been we've been using that um and then the u-haul storage we, we keep a u-haul storage unit of Furniture, so when we move someone into housing, we can give them at least a bed and a couch and not just make them sleep on the floor. So um, that's not changed. That, that's been the same um, in, the, in the budget. The line items have been the same. Just that flexible spending is, is different. Any questions from the council for Christine? Thank you, Christine. Thanks for all you do. Uh, we appreciate it. Ron? That is uh, all of the updates that we have for you from HCDD. Um, I think we have a pretty good balanced budget here that uh, you know, will prevent any issues in the future. 
And I look forward to the uh, presentation on uh, the, the, the new possibility. Um, and uh, when it, whenever it's ready, just let Kim know and we'll get you on the schedule. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, Jack. Yes. Um, the, you know, one thing we didn't discuss was the, they're increasing the fees for the landlord licensing fees. Um, what is uh, the increase uh, associated with as far as cost to the service? Do we have a breakdown on, on the cost of, of everything? And then, uh, you know, because I know part of it goes to finance. I, I know that there's a couple different aspects to it. So I don't know if you can uh, speak to the breakdown and uh, making sure that it's that what we're doing with our fees is that, it, that it's a one to one is right. basically uh, my perspective on, on fees. Yeah, um, if I am able to share a document with you, I actually have done a direct cost analysis uh, with the support of Keith's department to determine uh, what our direct costs are. So that's, you know, what does it cost to process a license from point A to finish? Um, the one piece that I think we need to continue to stress, and it's hard to really determine the exact cost is, the indirect or ongoing costs associated with rental licensing. Um, but I have that document available. Um, that document will be going out to all of our rental prop. Well, it's gonna be going out to Sapoa today for distribution, um, along with a, um, with a document that I've written explaining the need for the increase. Um, and one of the things I think that we need to continue to look at as a whole um, is, you know, what what has happened from what my, my understanding is we there's been these periods of time where these fees have remained the same over a period of four or five, six years, and then you do an increase and, and it looks drastic. These, uh, our cost increases every year uh, as a city. And if we need to evaluate that on a yearly basis, my intention is from this point forward is to evaluate that on a yearly basis and make those proposed changes on a yearly basis so it doesn't look like such a drastic increase. But when you wait five years to do it, then you have this increase that if it was spread out over the amount of five years, um, wouldn't look so drastic. But yes, I do have that document. I can share it on the screen now if you'd like, or I could send it over after, um, after the meeting to, for distribution for you all to Ron, take a look. Ron, I, I think what you should do is two things. One, um, send that to the, each of the council members. Okay. Uh, and second, could we see? Could you also send a copy of that letter that's going to Sapoa? Because the yes. day they receive that letter, uh, the five council people in this uh, in in this conference, uh, we're going to be our phones are going to be ringing off the hooks. Okay. Yeah, I'll have that over to you today, and I can pause on distribution until tomorrow if you have any insight that you'd like to add. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and it and it. it it is, it is um, upon looking at the document itself uh, is very reasonable what has been imposed or what has been proposed. One of the um, important pieces that I think was added that was missing from the fee structure, if you register a new unit, so say if uh, you bought 25 units uh, and you have to register them as new units under a new landlord license, uh, the fee was $120. And there are a lot more costs associated, specifically direct costs associated with new business licenses for rental properties. In, in the past, there, there was no fee increase for uh, delinquent, uh, delinquent registrations. So what, what would happen is it would automatically default to what was uh, the delinquent pricing for a renewal. Um, and if, you know, if you were to take a look at it strategic, strategically from a business standpoint, um, in the long run, it would have paid off to wait and pay the delinquent fee versus registering them on time. So that's one of the corrections that you'll see on the fee document under new license, uh, new rental licensing and new landlord licensing uh, processing costs. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure our people are paying on time and then we want to make sure they're not saving money by not paying on time. So that's got another increase you'll see in there um, that just kind of standardizes what we do. And Jack, if I could just add one thing on that topic before we move on, 
um, and you'll you'll read this in the letter, but uh, just so everybody that's watching understands, um, the fee in, the proposed fee increase for the landlords uh, will, won't come into effect until renewals that happens in March of the following year. Um, so again, um, you know, it's not. Uh, we, we expect to be in a better uh, economic position then, um, so it's not a, an increase right at July 1, um, where the, I, the, you know, I could see some folks having an issue with that. So uh, trying to be sensitive to that as well, but, but knowing that there are real costs associated with it. Yeah, and I think yeah, another, another important piece to add is as we, as we look and develop ways to, uh, to streamline our processes as a city and make it easier for the user, the property owners, the rental property owners, uh, with the addition of the center gov software, I really do believe it's going to simplify their cost on their end to handle their registration process um, with a, you know, a, a smaller amount of time from point A to point B for them, less work involved. And as we explore that and, and get through it, I think it's going to be a benefit to the community as a whole. Thank you, Ron. We appreciate yep. it. Uh, Dan, good to have you on. We see you. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Rachel. All right. Uh, let's go to the next item, which is debt service and other ish other uses. I would assume that Keith, you're going to handle this one. You're on mute. I can handle that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen okay. to make it easier. And the, the, the good news is, is we've already uh, touched on uh, the debt service. And so it stole the financial health stole the thunder in that we've mostly hit on uh, the debt. But I'm just going to do a quick run through again, just to make sure everybody's uh, comfortable. So I'm going to start out with the um, projects that were approved and are funded from bond. You can see the last column. These were the projects that were going to uh, fund from bond proceeds in FY22. We had the GOB air handler, the, um, the aerial ladder truck, the um, field operations uh, garage phase three. We had downtown street, street, streetscaping project, a portion of it was funded from bond and the uh, Market Street shoreline improvements. So that total, oh, one more uh, was, excuse, let me move this uh, thing out of the way here. The last item was the culvert that um, Amanda mentioned earlier today on Northward and Burlington for 290. So the grand total from this year was $4,470,076 uh, from bond proceeds for general capital projects. There's additional funds that will be um, added to that from last year where we, we only had about 2 million that we planned uh, to use bond proceeds, but we were able to defer that so we could consolidate our uh, bond issuance into one year. And we, that's how we saved some money this year. Jump into the uh, water sewer fund. <laughs> uh, I mentioned that we've, uh, we've asked to transfer 740,000 from our, our, our impact or capacity funds to maintenance. That's the bottom line there. And by having those funds um, in the revolving fund, we're able to do two projects and, not, and avoid debt. <clears throat> Similarly, we had the filter replacement project that we're filing a, 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 a declaration of official intent so that we can fund that from cash this year and reimburse ourselves next year when it's uh, more significant. So we had zero uh, new debt coming out of the water sewer fund. Putting all that together, I went over that the um, administration is very careful to monitor what our available uh, debt is. Um, and uh, th so there's no accident that we're not exceeding um, what 
restrictions are in our financial policy saying, hey, we wanna, we would like not to exceed uh, debt service beyond 10% of our expenditures. So that's being carefully watched. And that's it for debt service. Any, any questions on that? No, I think the presentation that was, the initial presentation certainly helps the one we had uh, with the financial health piece. Um, and certainly the warning light is, is on for, uh, what was it, 2028 or 2025? 2025, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah, as far as miscellaneous, um, you can see the health insurance uh, remain the same. Uh, pretty much everything in this category of insurance is uh, flat. And um, miscellaneous, the, uh, there was a small adjustment uh, in the retirement admin fee that the, the state retirement system charges per employee. And um, there was a small reduction and the speed camera administrative costs that were estimated as well. So we had a, a, a total of $4,000 uh, decrease. That, that covers the miscellaneous category. Any questions? Any, any questions from the council? I can't see, I, you know, I can only see four people. I know Muir doesn't have any. <laughs> no, I don't have any questions. Great, thank you. Oh, there we go. I'm fine. Good, Michelle. Good. We're good. Okay. Um, we have listed uh, some time for general discussion. Um, why don't we do this? It's 11.22. Um, Let's put a maximum time limit on 12 o'clock because we have a lot of information. We have a lot of discussion, but we need a lot of, a lot of information relative to some of the questions we had. So if, if we target for, let's target for uh, 1145 and see if we can get, uh, take care of any questions that if anybody has questions uh, and like to discuss now um, or clarification that may be needed. Is that agreeable to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's nodding. So. Um, Jack, like yeah. I said, I have to jump off at 1130 as, you, as you're aware. Nope. Um, no problem. But what I'll do is um, I'm going to put an email together to you to kind of sum up some of my notes. Um, I'll get it to you probably by tomorrow morning if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I've got to, I got to bounce off for another, for another situation. No problem. Thank you, Angela. Okay, um, any, anything that we need to follow up on to get more information on that we haven't already covered? No? I think we've done, we've done a great job. Yeah, I, I think we've covered, covered everything pretty thoroughly. The, the, uh, the presentations were, were done very well uh, and they were prepared and um, that helps. Uh, so, but I do think that we, you know, we've got a list. Certainly, the uh, Ron's got the putting together that that presentation, mm -hmm. um, and then the other the other items. Now, what we do normally normally is that in the next session, which is really sort of a by that time we, we will be fine tuning. Uh, we will go over the what we call the plus minus list that Keith put together, and we'll spend some time talking about that. And we will also have had the um, work session on the new uh, thing for HCDD. Uh, and, and those are the two critical items, but there are some other minor items uh, that we picked up from the personnel committee that uh, we will bring up and discuss at that time. And we'll go through that list one by one. Uh, I, I've got about looking at this. Oh, maybe 30 items. 
that that we uh, put down that the personnel committee had. Now, some of them we've already ticked off, like the plotter and, and those kinds of things. Uh, but there are some other ones that I, we, we need to talk about. So give those some thought when we're uh, while we're waiting for, uh, for the next meeting. Um, one of the things that you'll note, and I, I believe Kim has notified um, administration that we are going to put the uh, software back on the next work session. We are not gonna bring it to council because I, I've done some investigation and I have several questions that, that need to get answered. So uh, that will not appear on Monday's agenda as we had planned. And we will, uh, we will get some, uh, I have a list of things that I got and anybody else. So consider uh, that work session uh, to finalize and, and take our action uh, relative to putting it on the agenda for vote. Um, any questions from anybody? or any comments? Julian? I would just say, you know, concur with, with what you said about the preparation from the department heads and their presentations was, was really great. And kudos to Jana and Ron uh, for their first budgets uh, and, you know, right in the middle of it and, and knowing what's going on. I mean, that, that's, you know, it, it shows the, the caliber of people that we're hiring to lead our departments in our city and you know, great job on on finding finding those people. Julia, you had some comments. Uh, I was just going to ask. Uh, I saw the email about uh, InterGov going back to work session. Um, if there's anything that that we can be ready for in advance, if if there are questions that we can start to, um, if 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 they involve you know some research and reaching out to Inter uh, Munis or Tyler. Uh, if we could have that ahead of time, that would be great. But um, maybe what we could do, if if you want, uh, I can give you my questions um, after this meeting. Maybe we can stay on, uh, and uh, after the and and get maybe any somebody else has uh, questions as well. Would that help? And then I'm available. Can... Yeah, I've got to jump off at eleven thirty, but Andy can stay and, and gather those from you. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else that wants to stay uh, on is, is welcome. Otherwise, I think we're done for the day. The only, you know, the only quick thing I wanted to mention, um, I, I brought up on Monday, there's some additional uh, career ladder adjustments and pay things that did not get into this budget. So instead of adding them a la carte, we were going to address them at the May 11th. Um, holistically, it'll come in the term of like a finance adjustment, but I mean, some of the things we talked about a little bit, it just didn't make it in. So we just want to let you know that that's coming um, forward. So you're going to have that on the plus minus list? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, that'll work. Um, all right, anybody then the, uh, I'll announce right now that this work session for the budget is, is uh, adjourned and uh, we can stop recording. Um, Lionel, thank you very much. Or Mark.